OK, so hello. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming. Um, so let me give everyone, I, there's a whole bunch of people here, and I don't know how much everyone knows. So I'm going to do a super quick, I'll try to make this a quick recap of the kind of onboarding project, what we're trying to do, right? So um, onboarding, basically, from the moment someone first becomes aware of Firefox until we've like fulfilled our mission to put them in control of their online life, we're onboarding them. Um, for a long time, our onboarding flow has kind of been a, like a default experience. Um, basically, the result of small decisions instead of a comprehensive plan. A large part of how we ended up like that was is because of the way we're organized internally. So things are done like generally by touch point or by feature. So to address that, uh, this year we're looking at onboarding as a product and we're working together as like a cross-functional team to build um, a new onboarding experience in a holistic, systematic way uh, designed to make people awesome like this. Um, and our bet is if we do that, we'll improve retention. So, um, ultimately, that experience should encompass many touch points, right? So the marketing and the messages that someone sees before downloading Firefox through to the download page, um, you know, on to the installation flow, it should continue on across the first month or so and include mobile and services. Um, this is sort of a, this is a simplified view of that flow. There's like a gestation period. This is when you're learning about Firefox, thinking about it. Um, then first run, this is where you download, install Firefox, open it for the first time. Hey, can everybody mute? I'm getting an echo. Thank you. Um, and then um, a, like the first month or so after, after you install it. Um, so, but uh, where we're focusing our efforts to begin is like the first week, uh, the first few days. This is where we can have uh, the most impact. So last fall, we had an onboarding summit uh, and we identified um, a number of top priorities and we're addressing these with some initial projects. Um, we kind of break it up like this, um, extending desktop onboarding beyond installation uh, creating an engaging, consistent experience, and fixing some basic quality issues. So, uh, all right, so here's uh, where we are right now. So extending onboarding. Um, all right, so currently our biggest onboarding lever is the first run page that opens when you first install Firefox. It's our one best chance to talk to new users. Um, but right now we have this account signup page there that's pretty successful. We're creating a, a bunch of accounts. Um, it's increasing retention. Um, but there's a lot of other things that we think are important. Um, for, for example, you know, setting Firefox up, pinning it to your taskbar, getting it on your mobile device, tracking protection, add-ons, customization. There's, there's a lot of things that we could be talking about uh, here. So starting uh, uh, with Firefox 46, thanks to uh, Justin Dulski's team, uh, we can now open uh, additional pages uh, some number of hours and or sessions later um, after you install Firefox. So uh, for example, uh, maybe when you install Firefox, we just help you get it set up quickly and we're out of your way. But then on day two, after you've had some time to use it a bit, that's when we talk to you about creating an account and maybe day three or day four or something, um, uh, we encourage you to connect it with your mobile device. Um, timing, cadence, all of that stuff are things that we'll be able to control and play with and experiment with. So um, in preparation um, for, for being able to start testing this in Firefox 46, we started, we've been working on a, a consistent experience. Um, so, um, our current flow has assets created by different teams at different times, and it's 
very clear to someone installing Firefox for the first time. Um, it results in, experience, in an experience that feels like disjointed at best and confusing at worst. So um, we've been working on creating a unified uh, visual um, and copy approach that's infused with the Firefox personality, uh, mainly uh, whimsy and rebellion, sort of in equal parts. Um, so there's a few caveats that go along with creating a whole art direction here. Um, one is that the brand team is actually working on this very thing um, uh, concurrently. So they, they're working on distinguishing Mozilla and Firefox and, and their work won't be complete for a while. And that means uh, we're, we're gonna have to circle back um, on all of this uh, work later. Um, some parts of the flow, um, like for instance, the installer um, is, uh, or, or uh, other parts are separate. They're not web pages, um, and they're not updated at the same cadence. So it'll it'll be months yet before we have a completely redesigned flow from end to end. Um, and the other caveat is that we're going to be doing validation and retention tests as we go along, and we're going to make adjustments as necessary. Um, but uh, with all that in mind, the desktop retention team, Chris Moore's team, has been uh, working through a number of designs, kind of using a physical journey or, or um, accepting or taking on a mission as metaphors. Um, and last week, they started collaborating with the Mozilla.org team to define a new download page. Um, and this is what it looks like. Um, so, uh, actually, this week, the Mozilla.org team is building this and I think seven other variations, um, and we're going to begin testing this soon. Um, uh, you know, this page in particular, um, if you, you know, compare this to our, our current uh, download page, the, the big, big difference is just kind of the, the, the visual style of it. Um, and the copy down here uh, at, at the bottom, which is something that, uh, that uh, we'd like to experiment with, that we think uh, will be important. Um, one of the things that we saw from the summit um, was that um, although the download page is um, super clear, certainly gets people to click the button, um, uh, it didn't provide a lot of information about, you know, what the real value of Firefox um, is. And so we've been working with these three things, performance, privacy, and public good. Um, I'm excited to try those out here soon. Here's, um, this is another view. This is like after you click the download page, this is a uh, the thank you page. Um, and this is just some other, another version of the artwork to give you an idea of the, the style and the feel of it. Um, quality. Oh, right. So at the onboarding summit last fall, um, again, we identified um, a number of known issues that are just things that we should fix. So here's some of the recent work that's been done. This is all um, uh, engineering work that, um, uh, again, Justin Dulski's team has been working on. So um, uh, removing roadblocks. Um, a couple of things like this this first item is in like Windows 7 or Windows XP. Um, the installer has an opt out checkbox for making Firefox your default browser. And if you uncheck it, um, we would follow that up with a modal dialogue asking you to make Firefox a default browser. So now we won't do that beginning in Firefox 47. Um, we've removed reader mode and the tour that goes along with it from YouTube and Pinterest. Um, it wasn't much good on YouTube and on Pinterest, it would give you errors. So it wasn't a good experience for people. Um, and uh, the new tab page um, in Firefox 46 will no longer have the modal, um, the new tab page has got an update um, tour. Um, let's see, small on small screen sizes, Firefox will start up maximized instead of in the past, it's been really small and uh, cuts off all the content, all the things that you were trying to say to you. 
Um, and we did some works on making bookmarks easier to understand. So um, when you create a bookmark, the little bookmark edit panel will come up, um, letting you know you've created a bookmark and letting you file it. Um, if you click on the uh, menu and go to show all bookmarks, um, it defaults to showing the unsorted bookmark folder where all of your bookmarks that you've created should be filed by default. Um, and we're um, working on show, showing recent bookmarks like in line in the bookmarks menu. Um, so, uh, and right now though, um, that team is focused on E10S work. Um, and so we stopped working on these things, but when that wraps, uh, when that wraps up, we'll get back to onboarding. Um, one of the next big pieces of, of work that, you know, besides some finishing up of like bookmarks work and stuff, um, is working on addressing the flow of what happens for people who have uninstalled Firefox or haven't used it in a long time and they give us another chance. They try Firefox again. Um, that's a, a flow that we want to address. We want to give those people like a like new experience. Um, let's see. So um, what else is happening? Um, so there's a, a bunch of stuff <laughs> happening all over the place. Um, a lot of it though happening on Chris Moore's team on the desktop retention team, things like um, automatic cohort attribution, um, which will be awesome. This is a way to let the um, installer, um, it, it's basically we can do things that we would need to create funnel cakes for now. We can do automatically uh, by having the installer um, provide a little attribution thing for, we can define cohorts at automatically. Um, so we can do things like test things across locales from different sources. Um, there's a lot of things that we'll be able to do there without creating funnel cakes. Um, there, we've been working with the accounts team on encouraging multi-device accounts. There's a weekly meeting, um, uh, myself, Chris Moore, other people, um, uh, Chris Karloff talking about um, how we encourage multi-device accounts. Um, the desktop retention team's been working on encouraging account sign up through other channels like uh, the newsletter and snippets. Um, there is now also a weekly meeting about um, uh, collecting the data that we need to improve uh, Firefox and onboarding and how we disclose all of that to users. Um, and um, so if you, if you noticed, uh, if you install Firefox newly somewhere, uh, you know, about a minute into um, setting Firefox up, maybe you're creating a new account. There's a little bar that appears at the bottom of the window um, asking you um, uh, to choose what information you wanna share with uh, Mozilla. It's in a, it's in a weird spot. Um, the bar was there before the page was there. So it wasn't all designed uh, together. But um, so we're talking about how we can collect the data that we need and inform people in a way that's responsible and respecting of their privacy um, and make the whole thing work nicely uh, together. Um, of course, the Android and iOS teams of working on onboarding um, and um, myself and Anthony Lamb have been meeting to talk about that. Because um, uh, at, at some point here, we want desktop onboarding and mobile onboarding uh, to work together. Um, and of course, all look and feel like the same company. Um, let's see, boy, other things. Um, adding features to Firefox or like add-on discovery is a whole uh, initiative happening um, and that we hope to be able to add into um, onboarding as one of those later run uh, pages um, and that's coming down. There's more if you, we can talk about that here in just a second. Um, uh, 
uh, but also if there's things that you're wondering about or you want to know more about, um, please feel free to ping me uh, later. I can, if I don't know the answer, I'll put you in touch with the person who does. Um, yep, let's see, and what else? Last thing is, so what's next, like immediately next that we'll be working on? This is uh, mostly the desktop retention team and the Mozilla.org team. Again, getting ready for testing in Firefox 46. Um, so we're going to be doing download page design validation. Um, we're going to start working on designing first and second run pages. Um, and then when 46 is out, we'll be doing um, retention tests for that um, multiple page flow. Whew. That's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, so, sorry, that was a whole lot of me talking. Um, and I'm done. That's all I got. Um, but please, uh, if there are things that um, need more clarification or you have questions, things that you want to know about, now is the time. I have a question. Yes. Uh, is there like a boxes and arrows version of of the flow just good for the presentation so we really get a sense of what are the UI types that we're talking about as the users uh, on board? Um, uh, yes. So uh, way back uh, there was that sort of thing with the blue and green lines and stuff. I can, I'll have a link. I'll send it out with the notes from the meeting. There's a, there's an Envision version of this and there's a wiki page version of it. Okay, cool. I have a question about focus because what I see as our one of our competitive advantages right now, for example, is the awesome bar. Mm -hmm. And I did see something mentioned in here about the awesome bar in particular and how like right now we need to build up a history of somebody's visits and searches for the awesome bar to actually be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and related to that, I saw the thing about bookmarks as was confused because I don't I don't know how people use bookmarks, but showing them bookmark management UI sounded like something I would never ever want. So I'm interested in like how how we think that these things are going to highlight the things that are most valuable about Firefox to users. Um, sure. So um, so sorry. So a little bit of background about the bookmark stuff. This was something that came up at the onboarding uh, summit. So um, when I when I've done um, tests with, so I've done lots of tests of like installing and using Firefox um, and, and testing this flow. Um, and uh, invariably people were having um, uh, problems with uh, bookmarks. So um, they all got the concept of like, oh, it's like the star, just like everybody else. I click the star, that's bookmarking, I got that. Um, so we have this little animation where the star jumps into the menu. Um, and so a lot of people's reaction is to, they click the star and they see it jump in the menu and they go, oh, and then they click the menu um, and then they don't see the bookmark that they've made. Um, and they're unsure of like, okay, well, where did it go? Um, I, th I think I have a video of someone spending nearly two minutes um, looking for the, for the bookmark that they just made. Um, and it's not that um, people, uh, m most, almost everybody kind of quickly recovers from that, but it's just a thing that like, wow, w why do we stress people out at all about where their bookmark went? There's probably a few things that we could do um, that without rethinking the way bookmarks, <laughs> the whole bookmarks uh, work, um, that will make that easier. So that's where that book, that those kind of bookmark items came from as far as like the quality things to fix. So, and so, but to address like um, the awesome bar, right? How, how do we highlight that? That is definitely, sorry, so that is something that's um, um, like in the thought of like things that we should be talking to people about. I didn't mention it um, in particular, um, uh, but it is a little farther d like down the road. So in terms of like sequence of things that we're, we're gonna do so, um, uh, we'll be launching this, 
or testing this uh, download page, we're going to make sure that, you know, new copy, new design, it, you know, is not breaking things. People can still download Firefox successfully. Um, then, then we'll expand that to like the current uh, first run page that we have. We'll make sure that it still all works there. Um, and then we'll introduce this idea of multiple pages, uh, you know, over time so that um, you install Firefox, you see a page, the, the, that moment you install Firefox, and then the next day or two days later, we're not sure of the cadence of these things. Like, uh, we want to, to show people the information as quickly as possible. We also don't want to annoy them or fatigue them, right? So there'll be some experimentation with like, and how many can we get away with, you know? Is two the maximum we can do before people are like, enough of this, or is four, five, you know? Uh, I don't know. Um, and, and then we'll have to, we'll be trying uh, different things there. So like talking about the awesome bar may be one of those things or talking about tracking protection may be one of those things. Um, and, and, and we'll see um, how they work. And we'll be doing retention tests, like this combination of things, how does that perform versus this other combination of things? Does that, does that answer your question? Partly. I'm just thinking about this in terms of the things that make Firefox unique and sort of sellable and, yeah. and how we, we expose those in the onboarding. Uh, yeah. Like it's tied, it's tied for me with bookmarks because I don't ever want to manage my bookmarks. I never want to see a list of them. The thing that makes them visible is that they seed the awesome bar with, with cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, I mean, that, I know that that's not the way everybody works. There are some people who really like right. it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how those lay users use it. It's a very much a utility type choice to begin with. And then, then the differentiators come into play where they come on. They're like, I just want to search and go to Facebook and bookmark the thing and rinse and repeat. Uh, and so it's fairly basic utility things to begin with on why they choose Firefox. And then they stay around um, because of differentiator things, the things that make us different. Nick, you had some comments? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, basically I agree with what's been said in this conversation. What's cool is we can actually remind people of like why they made a great choice to pick Firefox, right? That can be our tone. It's not even so much that like, oh, you better use this or it's not useful. It's like, hey, you chose a great browser because it does this cool thing and that cool thing. And so I, it's great that we can do those as those features become more useful, right? Like the awesome more is more useful after using it for a week, let's say. The other thing is as we're working on new experiences, like our work and activity stream with new tab, um, we want these things to be very self-evident. And so like new, the new version of new tab will actually sort of show you your recent bookmarks and remind you of the things you do recently, um, which will hopefully help make that a little more apparent rather than us having to like be so explicit, open a tab, tell you why you should use it, right? It's a little more like tells its own story. I think that we have some, some nice opportunities that Michael has already mentioned happening on Chris Moore's team to really experiment via funnel cakes with what feature usage is actually driving long-term retention, that we have this um, hypothesis that feature usage does drive long-term retention, and, and probably it does, um, but what features and what can we focus on? So right now we know that accounts um, activation does drive long-term retention, so does multiple device usage um, via sync. Um, what else is there? And I just shared a, a study that um, our team did last year, late last year, called the Bright Spot Study. And what was really interesting is um, lay users who love Firefox, only 6% of them say that they love Firefox because of a given feature, um, which is interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but we can kind of look into what um, users are already talking about, um, what comes up on their mind, and potentially we could focus on that for hypotheses to look at. Um, and then I'm also, I, I'm, I love this meeting. Thank you so much, Michael, for setting this up. I think sure. it's awesome to get everybody in a room who's working on this, so good job. <laughs> um, so I think the other thing that I'm, I'm really keen to kind of take away is maybe a, a goal of this meeting is um, so, much, so much experimentation is testing and testing is happening on product teams and the um, retention durable team 
um, and all of the work, Michael, of course, that you're doing. Um, my team is responsible right now, though it's ever changing, um, for the more ongoing communication streams to Firefox users. And so I would love to, like if there are any really groundbreaking discoveries, even small, um, from testing either on the retention team or the product side, I'd love for this to be a place where we can kind of share those big nuggets of information so we can integrate them into the kind of like longer life cycle programs um, as we kind of carry them forth. So to comment that this yes. is great. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would also add to like if you, if anyone has ideas for uh, making this meeting better, also let me know too. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be the way we just did it next uh, month. I know this seemed like a big data dump, um, uh, but it's kind of the first time we've had like, a, you know, feels like this many people together uh, to talk about it. So, um, yeah, we don't have to necessarily start with the entire recap of the, in, of the whole world uh, next time either. It could be more of a discussion about individual pieces. The recap of the world was a good <laughs> level setting, I think. <laughs> All right, anything else? Okay, going once, twice, great. We don't need the whole 45 minutes. Uh, thank you all very much. Again, if you have questions or things to follow up, uh, uh, email me. I will uh, send out this presentation. I'll make sure it has links to all the things it should have links to, um, and I'll, I'll stick that in the invite. So you'll uh, and I'll send it out. Okay. Thank you very much.